Ladies and gentlemen, we have been very lucky. We had some great speakers at this event so far. And to have uh, Dr. Peter McCullough uh, from the United States, he has been an absolute Trojan for the cause uh, over the last few years, and he's been attacked in the media relentlessly. Like many of us, he's still standing, and he will be on the right side of history, as, as will you, I promise you. Now, let's correct a couple of things. Um, I have had some brilliant briefings on the WHO from Philip, um, two of them in, in, Nor in Norway, which was, was excellent. Um, and yes, I would love to claim all the credit for the debate we had in our parliament on the uh, WHO pandemic treaty, but that would not be right. Um, we have a quirk in the UK parliament, the mother of all parliaments, that if um, 100,000 of our electors write in for a, with a petition for a particular debate, then the government is duty bound to put on that debate. I'm pleased to say that we managed to achieve a, a petition total of 156,000 electors for the WHO debate. And so we, we, we had that debate, much to the government's chagrin. And of course, they said that there would be, uh, there would be no handing over of sovereignty, uh, there would be uh, you know, no uh, giving away of powers, and, and we wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be agreeing to any of this. Well, um, unfortunately, um, governments, as we know, do not always tell, tell the truth. Um, ladies and gentlemen, some seven years ago, um, I didn't think I'd be sitting here. I was leading the Leave campaign for the East Midlands to leave the European Union. And as you know, we were successful. Um, however, I am delighted. <laughs> I'm delighted to be back here. <laughs> With my, with my European friends standing shoulder to shoulder on, uh, on, on, on an issue of the most importance uh, in, a, in our lives and, and those of our, of our children. Um, so, I didn't expect to be here, but I think we can all say that over the last three years, a lot of things have happened in our lives that we didn't expect to happen. So, desperate times lead to desperate measures. And my main point... The main point I want to make uh, in my address to you today in the time that I've got available is that, uh, and I want you to hear loud and clear, that the very concept of the democracy that we've taken for granted all of our lives is under threat as it never has been before. And it's not just in my country, it's not across Europe, it is across the whole of the world. It's not from external armies, mounding up on our borders this time, but it is from the corruption and the decay of our own institutions who are allowing this to happen. I think every one of us who's elected uh, and represents our people, we need to remember that we are always the servants of the people. We are not their masters. And some of my colleagues and some elected representatives around the world have forgotten this lesson. They will need to learn this lesson again. We are entrusted to represent our constituents and their best interests at all times. And when their rights are threatened, we are duty-bound to defend them. Again, many of my colleagues seem to have forgotten that, and the, the turnout even for the WHO debate in our parliament was uh, very, very disappointing. So, the Global Pandemic Treaty is such a threat to our sovereignty looming ominously on the horizon, together with the amendments to the international health regulations, which will fundamentally, if they're passed through our parliaments, alter the relationship between the citizens and the state. The WHO would paint an illusion of uh, nation states coming together to fight deadly pathogens, when it's really, as we've already heard, a power grab by an unaccountable elite uh, rather keen to reinforce the, the power shift that has already happened in the uh, global pandemic response to COVID-19. The recommendations made during COVID-19 by the WHO were advisory, and they now want them to become mandatory. I mean, let's face it, the, uh, the WHO did not exactly cover themselves with glory with their recommendations during the COVID-19 pandemic. It was a litany of disaster 
a disaster which the WHO were not even keen to, to look into. They've had no review of their performance and their recommendations during the recent COVID-19 pandemic. So confident are they that their, uh, their ideas and their uh, ad advice was absolutely perfect. So there could be no doubt um, that if we fail to learn the mistakes of history, certainly that as far as the WHO are concerned, they are doomed to repeat them. So the World Health Organization is an unelected, diplomatically immune, tax-exempt group that bears no resemblance to the good faith Florence Nightingale Union of Nations set up over 75 years ago. Public health and the decisions surrounding it now exist as a monopoly of the WHO, headed up by bureaucrats in Geneva, whose leadership has been embroiled in scandal after scandal. And the majority of the influence on the WHO now is by external entities. And indeed, as has been mentioned, the, uh, one of the richest men in the world has a massive influence over the WHO. Indeed, I think 84% of, of all the funding of the WHO now is by external commercial sources with an ability to direct the, direct, direct the uh, area that your, your generous donations to the WHO will send their policies. So it's basically pay to play. If you have enough money, you can influence the WHO. Not exactly the people I'd like to be deciding in the future whether my constituents can, uh, are, are, are locked into their houses, whether they can see their relatives, if they have to wear masks, and if they have to um, take mandatory medication. Um, I would say the, the least qualified people in the world to make those decisions. And any parliament that decides to abdicate its responsibilities to its constituents um, does not deserve the name of being a parliament and does not need deserve a seat in, in any elected uh, assembly. We have no right to relinquish our sovereignty, the sovereignty of our nations, because it's not mine to give away. It's not any of us to give away. Sovereignty always belongs to the people, and every election should be returned back to the people, where they will again decide who they allow to... Uh, represent them for the next parliamentary period. Forests can be grown for a thousand years, but could be chopped down in a few weeks. And the same is with our democracy. I'm, I've actually been shocked. And I think people in the UK have come to take uh, our democracy and freedoms um, as, as a right, an entitlement. Um, uh, that's something that would never be taken away. But I'm equally shocked that those in Europe who have suffered under tyranny in living memory would, again, perhaps acquiesce to that position again without resistance. So I don't think I'm being dramatic when I say that the, the global pandemic treaty and the amendments to the international health regulations will allow the WHO to declare um, a public health emergency of international concern, a fake, uh, abbreviated to, and not only when to call it, but how long it would last and how, when it would be, be over. And I, I suspect that it would be a very long time before we had uh, democracy returned to our independent parliaments. I call on every elected representative around the world to resist these WHO power grabs. Um, it, it would be a dereliction of our democratic duty that we have to our electorates. There's no way that we should be signing away sovereignty without the agreement of the people, and that would take a referendum in each country to hand over those sort of powers, and I would settle for nothing less. I'll end with, with a quote from America, which I think, since we've had uh, Dr. McCullough on, I think is quite apt. It said that when uh, when the people are scared of the politicians, that is tyranny. But when the politicians are scared of the people, that's democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to get to the latter and we need to get there quickly. We're in dangerous times. <laughs> Thank you.
The world is being pushed into globalization, a one-world government, just as prophesied in the Bible. In Revelation, we see a future global government which will be ruled by a man known as the Antichrist. He, along with the false prophet, will force all people to take his mark, 666, which will control all future transactions and a type of religious observance. Refusal to worship the Antichrist will mean death. Acceptance of this mark means eternal punishment from God, no forgiveness. Do not take the mark of the beast. Many are saying, we are in the last days, right now. Get saved by Jesus now, before it's too late.